This video is now going to show you everything you need to know about creating an assignment in Google Classroom. So first, teacher versus student view. So in my teacher category, I've already made an assignment. This is what I can see, and if I click it, I can see what I wrote about it. I didn't put a due date, I posted it here. I only have one student in my sample class because it's me, and I have not done the assignment yet. So one assigned, zero turned in, and then I could click this to get more details on the assignment, but there aren't any. In student view, so we're in stream, they can see there's only one post, but if they were to go to classwork, then they'll see I put it in the high category. So introduce yourself. All right, student now needs to view the assignment, and this is what they're going to see. So because I have comments available, students could post a comment you know, if they don't understand this assignment, so then they post that, and then, oh, look, if I refresh it, there's a comment. Huh? Can't you read? And now I've replied I'm now having a conversation with myself. But you know what? It's kind of fun. I'm home alone. I got nothing else to do. Oh, look, here we go. So that's why I like the comments section. But from student mode, they would have the assignment, and it's right here. They could just mark it as done. You know, if it was more of like a check-in, they can add a private comment, which means then these comments right here, every student in the class can see. These comments, it's just teacher versus single student. So I was doing the attendance question as comments, and I would have students post it as private, so then we were having a conversation, but that doesn't say it's done. So private comments are more like, can we clarify something? I don't want everyone else seeing what I have to say. You know, think of this as like your way to do office hours where no one else can see it. Now, I am going to add or create, and then it would come up as an attachment, and I could mark it as done. So let's just say I mark it as done. Yes, I've done everything. Okay, and now as this teacher, I come back to the assignment, and I need to refresh. Oh, look, I've turned it in. Hooray, it's done. I can grade it and do all that. So that's what the assignment section looks like. But now, how to actually create an assignment? That's what I'm going to show you now. So if you're in classwork, you go to Create, go up to an assignment, and then you get all this fun stuff. So you title it something, you add some description, really having a conversation with myself. I can add something. Maybe I have something in my Google Drive that's saved. Maybe there's a file on my desktop. Maybe there's a YouTube video I want to post or a link to a website. I can decide how many classes I want it to go in. I just want it in here, but I could add it to every class I'm a teacher in. Out of so many points, I could make it ungraded or out of points. I can add a due date. So let's say Monday the 6th by 11.59 p.m. or change that, or I don't want any time. That's fine. I can put it in a topic section. So by, I could add a rubric. Since it is a graded assignment, I could create a rubric. This works great if teachers are doing papers. You know, create rubric and add different categories. So here's this one category. Here's how many points it is. Now keep adding, and I could have so many categories. Personally, I've never done the rubric section. And unless you're assigning papers or things worth at least probably like so many points with so many different reasons they could lose points, there's no reason to do rubric. Last thing that's pretty cool, or second to last thing, is for all students. So, there's only one in here, but let's say you have a class of 40 kids, they'd all appear here. You can say this is due for all students, or you could unclick that and be like, I just want this student. Maybe you want to individually assign things. So, Kristen's going to get the question about her favorite color, Chloe's going to get the question about her favorite class, and then you keep going down. 
and you have different posts for different students. You could try that as a way to try to detour cheating. You know, a single question quiz, everyone gets a different question. But at the same time, they're home alone, they could text each other, it really won't detour cheating, and it is a lot more work for you. The only time I've ever done this is when I taught a, a charter school and the honors projects or honors students were within the regular class. So if I made a post regarding an honors assignment, I would only send it to the students that were in the honors English. And then you can go up here to assign, but the inverted arrow right here, you click that. You could just click it assign, and it'll appear right now for everyone to see. You could save it as a draft if you realize you need to stop doing something because now all of a sudden you need to feed the dog or the baby is crying or you need a break because you've been looking at the screen for so long. You could just save this draft and it will not be published, but it's still there and you can go back and edit it. You could scrap this entirely, delete it, you don't like it, or you could schedule it in advance. So it's Saturday, maybe I don't want it to appear until Monday at 8 a.m. and then schedule it that way. Now, unfortunately, you cannot schedule something for multiple classes. So if, let's say, I'm teaching five sets of English 10, and I want to schedule something for four days from now, I have to create the assignment and schedule it within every single Google Classroom. If I want to post it here now, right away, I could do that in multiple classes, no problem. So that's how to create an assignment using Google Classroom.